Hi, Dr. Paul Hader here. You know, healing is just an amazing thing. If we uh, have something going on with our bodily process, uh, some kind of challenge, uh, I think it's really important that we do a lot of different things to make that healing happen. You know, one, one time with my kidney disease many years ago, man, quite a long time ago, I went to, uh, I wasn't, I couldn't even walk across the street. I mean, that was so bad. Uh, I remember going to the Bahamas and I couldn't even hardly get out of bed. And one of the things that really helped was starting to do Qigong every day, which is moving vital energy, you know, the, the, the light of love through our body. And I was able to get through my day that way. And then I still said, you know, I'm not, not giving up God. I am not giving up. And I would tell God that every day. I am not giving up and talking to the, the God within me also. And so I decided to go see a Chinese herbalist and uh, Dr. Susan in New York. And she put me on a, a, about a tea of 20 different herbs and I took it and that night. There was a huge flush that came over my body. And, and the next day I was out walking my five miles. It was like really amazing. And over the years, I was taking herbs, and they were helping also, and I was thanking God, thank you for allowing us to happen, and they got it into my diet, and that you made a huge change. I mean, a huge change. I mean, it's like overnight change. And from there, uh, I was feeling great. And, and uh, I asked my wife to go see John of God, and uh, uh, miraculous things happened. Uh, you know, the, the actual, in my dreams, the entities, Dr. Vedat and uh, one of the other teachers came in and they actually opened up my kidneys and uh, I scooped up all the, all the tissue and it was like a, a fax machine going over the top of them and, you, and new tissue was formed and it was like, wow, and I was watching all this and I was like, wow, amazing. And, and to see the orbs, you know, in our rooms, running around. It was like confirmation of everything I believe. And I believe in, and it was also uh, an uplifting of spirit uh, to allow pe me to spread this word and, uh, and let me show people that there is another side of life that's on the other side of this veil. This is like a dream that we're living in. And uh, it's about healing everything in our mind, body, and spirit. This is what our life is all about, and in helping others in their suffering also. And uh, just about everyone is suffering of some kind of affliction, whether it be in their mind, their body, or their spirit. And But it all takes belief. It all takes faith of some kind to heal that. You know, it's like going to a doctor and the doctor says, you know, you got to take this and this and that, and then you're going, ah, that's not going to work. Do you really think it's going to, you're going to heal them? And in actual studies show, people don't get well because of this, you know? Um, and actual studies show that if a person believes they're going to get better and the doctor doesn't, you know, they don't do, fare very well either. But if the doctor and the patient think they're both going to get well, 99.9% .9 of the time they do. So it's, pretty amazing. Our beliefs make everything. And it's really important that we foster powerful, uplifting thoughts of love in our life. You know, it's one thing to speak thoughts of love. It's another thing to think thoughts of love. And it's even another thing to actually take actions of love. And when we actually put all three of these together, it's amazing what can happen. I think that's where all the great avatars came from, you know. You know, Buddha, Krishna, Jesus, that they were able to put all three of those together and make uh, amazing changes in people. And there was this, they didn't even have to do anything. They had this sense of feeling around them this aura that spread around these great teachers who came and loved people beyond, beyond words. 
and uh, this you know, spread. People in their presence, like 90,000 people would be attracted to them and, and, and change in a, in a second like that. It's just amazing. And so it's about allowing ourselves to start to change our thinking. That's the first thing. You know, every time we have a negative thought, to change that into a positive, loving thought. And that's the key word, loving thoughts. Uh, key words. And that's how we allow ourselves to <laughs> make this great transformation. And uh, it's also to have that faith. Like I, m myself, you know, I was not going to give up. I even told, told God, you know, I'm not giving up. There's got to be answers out there. And I know you will direct me in the right place, in the right time. And and eventually it did. I, I think I was meant to go down this particular path in order to help other people and help them to gain what they need in their process. And we all have that particular kind of path, whatever that is, to help us to learn and grow and become something that we need to do and the need to be and need to do on our on our path. And uh, I believe in that with all my heart and soul. And so it's about allowing ourselves to open up. And if we close ourselves off, we have negative thinking going on, we have uh, negative actions going on, uh, we have all this stuff happening all the time, how can we heal? It's almost impossible. And so it's, you see, you've seen a lot of people like that. I'm sure I have, you know what I mean? <clears throat> it's almost impossible. I, I know two people right now, three people right now, they all have diabetes. They refuse to eat right. And so, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> They refuse to eat right, they keep taking pills, and uh, if they were to go on my diet, you know, it'll all go disappear. We know with a plant-based diet, uh, whole foods plant-based diet, and with my diet, lifestyle also, that all these things can heal, but they refuse. And so, how can you deal with that? There's really nothing we can do. The person has to do the work from the inside out. And when they start doing that work from the inside out, everything changes. There's no doubt about it. Maybe there's a, something that awakens them on the inside that makes them feel as though, you know, I'm supposed to be here to do something to help somebody else. Maybe it is a need that is really necessary there. And it reminds me of a true story of a miracle. There was a, a a man and he had a farm and his wife but his far, a wife had passed away two years before and she came down with the flu this was back in the the 30s and uh, he had a little boy it was about uh, seven or eight and the neighbors were gonna take him camping and so he said okay he was working hard on the on the farm and so he said, okay, that's great. I'll get a lot more things done around here. And he was raising corn and different things. So they, the neighbors took him. And a terrible thing happened. The neighbor ended up having a head-on car collision with another car, lost control, and ran into another car. And the little boy was killed. And then the sheriff came and told the, the farmer, you know, I have bad news. Your, your little boy was lost in a car wreck and it just destroyed the farmer. And uh, he really lost all heart and everything. And then the farm kind of went, went to pot and this kind of disintegrated. His crops didn't do very well. And then all of a sudden, some uh, kids from a university nearby, uh, this I think was in Illinois, they came over and they said, we would like to ask you some questions about farming. And they said, oh, sure. But, you know, we're out here, we got some corn, but it's really not doing very well. And, and they asked them a few more questions and they talked with each other. And the, the two, there was a, a girl and a young man and a young lady, they said, you know what? We would like to come and intern with you and help you here on the farm for quite a long time. And he was kind of taken back, you know, he said, wow, that's pretty nice of you. So he said, sure, come on over. So they came over and they did a long-term intern, 
internship with him about a year. And uh, so he was really excited about it and it gave him a focus of being outside of himself and about helping these kids to become, you know, future farmers in the, in the uh, future of the United States. And so he was all excited about that and the farm started to thrive and that's pretty amazing. And then one day they were going to have a party because the uh, university students were going to, you know, their time was up. It's a year done. And he had put up balloons and everything. A lot of people were coming. And uh, these kids were on a particular road and they were coming to the farm for the party. And all of a sudden, a deer ran in front of them and he went off the road. The driver went off the road and they uh, turned upside down and they were hurt. And then all of a sudden, they were on a, actually on a kind of a back road, but nobody knew they were there. And they're, you know, the farmers started getting worried because they weren't showing up. And then all of a sudden, the little boy walks over to these kids who are laying on the ground, and and the little boy was the farmer's boy who had passed away. And he had a big quilt with him, and he said, "Here, put this quilt on." And the young man said, "Please help us, you know." We're, and they were. They had uh, some bleeding going on, and they had internal injury, injuries, and uh, he says, please help us, go tell somebody. And he, the little boy just said, everything will be fine. And then uh, a few minutes later, the phone rang at the farmer's house, and somebody answered it, and the little boy said, they're off on this road, they're off on this road, you got to go help them. And it was an old orchard road, and he said, he's off, they're the two university students are off on Old Orchard Road. You gotta go find them. They're there. You, I know you can find them. Go help them. And all of a sudden the farmer came back in and one, and this, one of these people was, had to answer the phone. He said, there's a young kid who said that they're over on Old Orchard Road. And so they got in the car and they went over there and they found the, the uh, two university students. They were covered in blood and they found this quilt that was on them. And the farmer looked at the quilt and he said, how'd this get here? This is impossible. This is the quilt that my wife made. It's usually sitting in my bedroom. And then they started asking, what, what was that phone call all about? And he said, there was a young little kid's voice and he said, they were over on Old Orchard Road. He said, what? That is a recording that I made. That's the last recording I have of my son. It's the only recording I have of his voice. It's sitting in my bedroom. How did it get in the in the answering machine? That record that tape. And he said, "I don't think it was the, a recording. I think it was somebody actually telling us they were here." And so, that can again it all boils down to faith. Was it the little boy who came as an angel to him? help these people, to help them heal, to find, keep them from dying. They had other things to do in life that they will make a big difference. And the little boy, the farmer's son, the little boy is eight years old, eight years old, wanted to come and help his father make a difference in his life so he could finally thrive and feel happy and let go of his grieving. I think it's really important that we uh, have some important faith, important love, important uh, caring and change our thinking inside. Allow ourselves to see things in a whole different light. Uh, and when we do that, everything changes. You know, it did for this farmer, and uh, this true story is pretty amazing that, you know, two kids want to make a difference in a farmer's life, uh, and a little boy wants to make a difference in his father's life, even though he's gone to the other side of the veil. And that's what life is all about, helping others whether it be in this life or in the next life. And we allow ourselves to move through those different levels and we change our feelings inside and we start moving to higher levels of love within. And that's what love is. Life and love is all about. And life is love. If we allow it to be love, all it takes is allowing ourselves to open our heart. So I hope you will open your heart. I hope you will have an understanding that we need 
to change our thinking inside and take actions of love and start making difference in the lives of other people and in your own life. Remember, if you would like to get a hold of me, all my contact information is down below. I hope you will subscribe. That's all down below also. And if you care to make a dip donation, that is greatly appreciated. My, my wife and I live on Social Security, and uh, it's always help helpful. And so I thank you in advance for that. And remember, always, I love you.